Hello and welcome everybody. Today we are in Noordwijkenhout in the Boekhorst outside. Good weather in the Netherlands, which is insane. And we're going to do how to improve your kick. We're going to start right now. And we have seals on just tunnel.com. I like it. You like it? Good match. Do you think they will see me on the court? First question of this video, would it be good to wear the same color as the court? Or should you use a very, like a very bright color so you get more shots? So maybe if your partner is not so good, wear the most weird color so they, they just think they have to play to you. Whatever. Why? I said to Sasha, would it be funny if I just lay on the court? No. Tip number one is imagine you're hitting the ball with your frame. If you want more kick, you want to imagine you want to hit with the frame. Because if you want a lot of kick, you want to kind of close your racket a lot. So if I'm going to kick, I don't want my racket to be open. Because then I'm gonna play like a flat or outside the, the, the park. But what would be good if you you kind of close the racket a lot. So this exercise can help you a lot if you want to have more kick. I would recommend, because this is quite hard, to toss the ball up for yourself. Oui. Sorry. The balls are going to fly everywhere. So do this when you have a lot of space. So try to close the racket and hit with the side. That was quite okay. So, um, yeah, that's tip number one. Whoa. So it's difficult, make your swing a little bit shorter. So now I'm playing a lot of kick. And from there, try to kick. Okay. Tip number two is change to Eastern backhand. So instead of continental grip, try to change to Eastern backhand. So this will help you to close the racket. So this is why you do this. Because if you have continental grip, I might play with a less open preparation. If I do this, you see it immediately closes the, the face of the racket, which helps me to get more kick. I also, I get a lot of questions about the Shux Phoenix Pro 4. If it's good, it's not so good. It's amazing. I think the shape Sasha got attacked. Sasha's getting attacked by a bee. She can handle it very well. She, if Sasha gets attacked by a bee, she can remain quite calm. I don't. I, I think more people have it. Um, but back to the uh, Pro Phoenix uh, Four, the Phoenix Four Pro. I think this shape is amazing because. You, it it's, doesn't feel like this, but it has that amazing power with the kick smash and with the volleys and especially also the fibodas where you put the top of the racket in the, in the ball. It just feels so good with the continental grip. <laughs> Sorry. Shit. We cannot go to the to the football. If I rotate my racket to eastern back end. Oh. 
yeah, that doesn't count. If I rotate my racket to east and back end, it's more closed. Oh, I can generate more kick. Gee, much better. Yeah, more kick. Tip number three is rotate your body. And when I mean rotate, I mean rotate a lot. So, when you do the flat smash, you kind of rotate the same way, but you're going in that direction. When you want to do the kick smash, I would recommend to do well that. So my left foot is inside the right service box and my right foot is in the left service box. And from there, I have more rotation. With the flat smash, I want to hit the ball there. Uh, and with the flat smash, I want to go there with my hip. So with the flat smash, I want to do that to generate power. With the kick smash, I want to hold my rotation. So I want to stay and to hold. So I'm here, stay and hold. So I want to stay, oh, I want to stay and hold. And that will help me to kick. Because I can never kick if I go this direction. So I need to force myself in this rotation to get more kick. So with the flat smash, nice. And with the kick smash. Oh. The next tip is push out your chest or bend your back. With the kick smash, you want to hit the ball from seven to two. And if you are straight with your chest, it might be difficult to get there. So when you do the chest out, oh, I'm gonna be more on the left side of the ball. So when you kick, instead of to be there, which kind of makes the flat rotation, you want to push out the chest and bend your back. And then try to kick it out. So without pushing the chest. So I have some kick with this, but if I really if I really put out my chest, I have more kick. Tip number five, kick your partner. If I do this, my right foot is going towards my partner. And uh, why do I do this? Well, I need to get balance. So because we did this in tip four, my balance is going backwards. So I need to put out my right foot to regain the balance. If I don't do this, I will fall. So let's use the right foot. I'm gonna kick Sasha in her face. And then I will try to kick it out. Oh, nearly. So the difference with the flat smash is that if I would do the flat smash, I'm gonna end up with my right foot as an anchor or like a horse kick. So this is the difference between flat and the kick smash. If you want more kick, put your right foot towards the fence. If you want more power with the flat smash, the horse kick would work amazing. So I will show you the difference between a horse kick and a partner kick. Easy. It's easy. The next tip is avoid to hit early. This may sound weird, but if you hit the ball in front of you, it is more complicated to go upwards with your racket. Because if you play, if you play a kick smash, your racket action is vertical. 
I'm gonna try kick with a contact point in front of me. I need to go forward and vertical. If I hit on top of my head, I can play the kick smash. So for maximum kick, I actually want to hit the ball behind me because from here, my racket can go vertical with the longest vertical direction. So here is maximum kick. So if I want to hit flat, should I hit in front of me? No, because your contact point is lower. So if you want to hit flat, you want to hit at the highest possible contact point. So where my arm is going to be the highest. Because then I can play the ball more down and higher on the last. If I want to play kick, I can hit the ball just before the glass to get maximum effect. So if I am far from the net, I would say from the second post, sorry, I would say from behind or around the service line, I'm gonna hit behind me and I'm gonna let the ball bounce just before the glass. So that's when I play the ball behind me. For most other shots, I try to get on top of my head because I can play a little bit flat and a little bit kick. So I would say, if I am around the second post, I can always kick the ball out with my smash. So I don't want to go for a lot of kick. I just want to go in between. If I'm gonna move backwards, I'm gonna hit behind me on purpose to get more kick because then I go for the deeper bounce. Because if I'm far from the net and I play the short bounce, smash, my opponent's gonna block it. Tip number seven, how to get more kick, is to drop up what I will call uh, an exercise, what I do with students. What I mean by drop and up is that you have to drop the racket, leave it in relaxation mode, and then go up. So what some players tend to do is to be in this position and they want to kick, or they are there, or here. I want my students to be drop up. So the top of my racket is facing to the ground. Because from this position, I can go up. That was not my best smash in the world. So from drop, up. So now I can really kick. You can see in the bounce that the ball went to the right direction, which means kick will help to get the ball out. What you can do is hold the record of your student here, so Sas can stand behind me. So if you have a student, let them hold the record there. Make sure that the, the degrees here are 90 and that this remains close to 90 as well. So from this position, I'm gonna try to kick. So when I play the ball up, Sasha has to release my racket. Now, so now you can, you saw that my preparation was not correct. So I want to go and end there. So I need to go here and to still close the racket. Yeah. So now the ball was bouncing to the right side. Uh, that's what you want. And that's possible because you drop the racket and then you go up. If you don't do this, you will never ever have enough kick on your smash. For maximum kick, this is the most important tip. The last maximum tip, kick, kick tip, kick tip for today is to hold the racket lower. My wrist is not relaxed if I have my racket holding like this. I prefer to have more space when I play the kick. My wrist is way more relaxed and way more flexible to generate kick. The wrist is a very good tool for the kick smash and for the vibora. Not for any other shots, in my opinion, so much. 
So if you hold a racket with a lot of space here, you can actually generate more kick. Check it out, what the difference is. So my racket is high on the, on the, on the grip. Out, so it's totally garbage, you know. I actually have more control if I hold it higher on the grip. Check my wrist action. Much better. It's also good to uh, sometimes release some air when you play the kick smash. So I have the racket high on the grip. It feels quite stiff because I naturally have a lower grip when I have time. There's a lop anyway, so you have time to, to, to hold the record lower. Oh, that's nice. Much higher bounce. Loose wrist is more kick. I hope this video helps you. Um, let me know tip number nine that you would have for the kick smash. And I'll see you in the next episode. Hasta luego. Ciao. Adios.